guys, how are you? My name is Jess. I'm an independent director with Pampered Chef, and I hope that you've been enjoying the virtual party that you have just attended. It is almost over, but we still have this fun experience for you. It is a full-on cooking show that I just did in my kitchen. So if you see all of this here, this is what you're gonna learn how to make right about now. So get out your pen and paper and get ready to jot down some fun tips and lots of tools and cookware along the way that may just help you in your kitchen and also help you save a ton of money. Enjoy. Okay, so it's time to get started on our chicken. How are we gonna prepare that today? I'm gonna show you one of my favorite methods of getting the chicken all ready to grill up. So I like to pound my chicken with a tenderizer um, to get it nice and thin, it cooks quicker. I feel like it's, it's well, it's a tenderizer, duh. So it tenderizes the chicken, can you believe it? So the chicken ends up just extra juicy, really delicious, and it cooks a lot quicker as well when you tenderize it. So in this Ziploc bag, I added just about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. I'm now gonna go in and add the Southwest seasoning, if you can see it. You could do so much with it. Anyways, it does have a shaker top to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and take my tablespoon. It fits into the spice bottles. Like, that's just, come on. You know, they think of everything, this company. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put about a table, about, probably about two tablespoons of that inside the bag. So what else do I like to do with this seasoning? Well, I love to rub it on my, um, on like steaks, meat, things like that. I love sprinkling it over popcorn, you guys. It makes a delicious popcorn seasoning. And you might be wondering, is it hot? Is it too spicy? It's got a slight kick to it, but honestly, it's it's still pretty mild. So I really love it. Okay, make sure you get all the air out. You see how I'm getting the air out? So here is my meat tenderizer. What I love about it is that this side is flat, this side has spikes. So I can unscrew this and flip it around, and if I want the spiky side, it's perfect for like tenderizing, you know, skirt steaks especially. We use it for skirt steaks quite often. But this time, we're gonna use the flat side. We're just gonna go in. So what I love about this tenderizer in particular, you guys, it's just the exact right weight. It's the perfect weight, and the fact that it's round and not like a square, like a lot of the mallets that are out there in the stores, it just evenly spreads the meat as it's tenderizing it, right? Sometimes I use it for like, I'll put like some nuts in here and crush some nuts if I just, you know, like things like that, you think of using it all the time. Just beat it, beat it. Okay, Whew. just joking, it was really easy. So I gotta tell you what I do love about these flexible cutting mats is things like, th like this. The fact that a little bit of the chicken is peeking out of the bag, cause I popped the bag, I was a little furious, but it's okay, cause guess what? I don't even have to change anything up. This is sitting on a flexible cutting mat, I'm gonna put it right over behind me, and then I've got another cutting mat I can put right here to finish off the rest of the prepping. Okay, now we're gonna talk peppers. I'm gonna show you a fun tool to get like perfect strips of peppers. Um, and also, how to get the guts out of the peppers. You know, the peppers, ooh, I got a sticker still on here. By the way, I gave them a rinse in my uh, metal, my stainless steel metal colander mesh set here. Comes with a set of three. This is the middle size. Love these. Let's go like this. Okay, you see that? Watch this. This little guy right here, the scoop loop, write it down. It's amazing. You just go carve out your peppers with a breeze. Look at my lovely pepper. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. Beautiful. I love peppers, you guys, because of all the beautiful colors that they come in. You just know it's going to be delicious. You know that your body is going to be like, thank you for feeding me this food. So this little guy, if you see these peppers here, look at how gorgeous they are. How did I get these so perfectly sliced? Do you see them? Do you see that? Like perfect slices. This guy right here, it's the quick slicer. So I'm gonna show you how you do this. Just slice your pepper in half, put it on top of the quick slicer, take the top of the quick slicer and just give it a gentle rock back and forth. And then boom, you have perfect sliced peppers. Look at how gorgeous that is. Mm-hmm, I lose all day long. Listen up, sometimes this tool, you might get something stuck in there. This little, I don't know, $5 item, something like that, it is the dual-sided cleaning brush. It's my fave. The end is like a tip on one end and the other side is a tilted like toothbrush. 
it first of all makes life easy for anything, but I love it for this. Like, look at it. You can just get those peppers right out of there. Um, but also great for cleaning any tool you have. I love it. It just is like the perfect tool. It sits right on my kitchen sink. So make sure you pick up the dual-sided cleaning brush. You will love, 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 love. Okay, look at this. We're gonna fold the flexible cutting mats like this and just put it all right in our classic bowls. Now it's time for the onion. Le onion. Le onion. We're gonna go ahead and slice one end off, the other end off. This is my favorite way of peeling the onion. And then I just do a little score down the middle. That way I can peel off the peel. Peel off the peel, voila. There you go. So you might be wondering, wow, Jess, the way you did those peppers, do you have a fun tool like that for the onions? Of course I do. The Simple Slicer. Why is it called the Simple Slicer? I'll give you one guess. Yes, that's correct. It's a slicer and it's simple. It has just three settings, so you don't like rack your brain trying to figure out, I don't know how to work this thing. So I'm gonna put it on one. I'm gonna do a couple slices back and forth. It does have a, um, a guard, I'll show you that in a minute. So you're probably like, ah, don't slice your fingers. Well, first of all, look at my fingers are hidden. It's not gonna be sliced, right? But then you're like, ah, don't slice your palm. Got you covered. Watch this guy. Now I'm gonna put it on level two. Okay, level two. We're gonna slice it. Okay, now we're gonna put it on level three. And I'll hold up all three so you can see what those um, thicknesses look like. So now I've got this guy. Ha -ha, I have more tricks up my sleeve. Now I'm gonna go back and forth. Okay, so we did level one. You guys, this is like paper thin. Do you see how nice and thin that is? I mean, we're talking like so thin, right? So think about it. Cucumbers, do you want a really, really paper thin sliced cucumber for like that delicious cucumber salad? That will be your go-to. Number two, perfect, right? Perfect for like a burger bar, anything like that. And then you've got number three, which is perfect for like onion rings. Whatever you wanna do, the world is your oyster. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil here. It's all gonna be driving together. It's gonna be dancing together. Mm, 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 food. Okay, I gotta calm down, let's go. And give this a little flip -a -roo. Using my large chef tongs here, you'll see me also over the grill pan with these, but these are my faves and I'll tell you why because look at they close like that and they open like that I know once again your mouth is like oh, what so you see my utensil holder back here what I love about it is that it also has a hidden spoon rest so I can just pull that out and keep it right here while I'm cooking it's time to fire up the grill all right so this is the double burner grill pan look at how nicely it stores together this fits on top of that brilliant so anyways love this guy okay here we go let's fire up the grill so i'm going to put both burners on i'm going to put them on a medium high heat yes these are cast iron they're heavy guys like they're legit and these are going to heat up i'm going to give them about five minutes four to five minutes to heat up so the presses are nice and hot the grill is nice and hot Okay, it's been four minutes and my I can feel the heat just radiating off of this grill pan. I know it's gonna be nice and ready. If you notice, I can touch the handles. I don't wanna touch anything else. It's gonna be super duper hot, but the handles stay nice and cool, which is a great feature. Oh, before we put the chicken on, actually, let me show you something. I don't have to spray this, I really don't, but I wanted to show you what I also use for a lot of my cooking is a nice little spritz of oil. So this is our kitchen spritzer. If you notice, it spritzes out nicely and all it is is oil. I have in here right now olive oil. I've put avocado oil in there. I've put canola oil. What I love about it is that you bypass the propellant that is in any aerosol spray. Okay, and also the soybean waste product that is an aerosol spray. If you notice your pans get sticky, that is from your aerosol spray. So if you don't want to ingest any fuel or, because uh, fuel is what's in the propellant, fuel or soybean waste product, get this. You can go ahead and put any oil you want in it. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. 
I'm actually gonna go ahead and spray some of the chicken on this side because the cast iron is not non-stick. And so I'll put a little bit on there to prevent it from sticking. I'm gonna take the hot press, lay it right on top of my chicken. Put these delicious veggies on this grill pan. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be just amazing. I'm so excited, I'm so, so excited. Think of all of the vegetables I'm gonna to have to just throw in a salad, in a tortilla, whatever I want or just eat it right out of the container, you know, once I store it. I'm gonna put the press on. You guys, what the press does with the veggies, it almost like caramelizes them. Now look at how many veggies I have on there. Isn't that insane? So I will, oh, this smells so good. I can't, it smells so good. It's been five minutes and now I'm gonna go ahead and flip my chicken. So I'll flip this up and see how it's looking. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell what's going on here. Oh, oh my goodness, that is so exciting. <laughs> Do you see how gorgeous that is? Okay, so it's gonna go back on it. I'm gonna set the timer probably. I put this on medium, by the way. So the burner that's underneath the chicken, I had it on medium high when we were heating this grates up. I moved it down to medium, and um, I'm gonna probably go just a little under medium right now to finish it off. It's gonna go for about another four to five minutes. Let's check on our veggies. Oh, they are just looking beautiful. So what happens is that when you're grilling them like this, the natural sugars from the onion starts coming out and kind of really ends up seasoning the whole mix really well. Adds a little touch of sweetness. We've got a little bit of that um, Southwest seasoning. I'm gonna actually hit it with a little bit of our sea salt. So let's take the sea salt right here. So this is our Himalayan sea salt in our salt and pepper grinder set. There's a set that you put pepper in one and salt in the other. And it is Pampered Chef's Himalayan sea salt, you guys, which is just an impeccable quality salt. You see the little pink specks in it? It's a pure mineral. There's no processing that goes into sea salt. So it's like a natural electrolyte for your body. Um, it's actually really good for you. And it brings your food up a notch with just a pop of flavor without covering the taste of food it enhances the food so we're gonna go ahead give this a little stir now that we've got that beautiful salt in there the aromas are just intense like they are so gorgeous so so gorgeous what's going on here you see how much these have started to um, dwindle down in the pan that's because all the water is being released so they are shrinking basically and put our press back on it. I like it with the press. I just think it cooks them really nice, like caramelize, caramelizes them a bit. Let me show you the best way to do shredded cheese. Forget the cheese that is in the pre, you know, the pre-shredded bags of cheese at the store. You guys, it does not taste as good. It does not melt as good. And it is covered in powdered cellulose and Look up powdered cellulose and ask yourself, why am I ingesting powdered cellulose if I don't have to, right? You can use an awesome grater like this microplane adjustable coarse grater. When you push this little button on the side here, see how it does that? It will expand for you. So you can have it like this and go over pasta or salads with a hard parm or cheddar, or mozzarella, whatever you want. I love to put it like this because then I could spit out an entire block of cheese in no time at all. And watch this, you're gonna see it just come out underneath it. Boom, no scraped knuckles. You know what I'm talking about, right? The cowbell cheese grater that we all either still own or have owned. Our cheese is done. So I take my flexible cutting mat. By the way, these are the small flexible cutting mats. Earlier, I had the larger flexible cutting mats. You guys, these are great for your knives. There's a silicone bottom on them so they don't skid around. They come with three. So if you get the small ones, you get three, three different colors. If you get the large ones, you get three, three different colors. And you can put them right in your dishwasher too. So they're super handy. Because they flex, it makes jobs like this super easy. 
The cheese is ready to grab out of your refrigerator without the powdered cellulose and it's going to taste way better, melt better, and just give you an incredible experience versus the store-bought shredded cheese. Okay, it's been another five minutes. I'm going to check on my chicken. It smells like it's just, oh, it is so lovely. You guys, this right here, that is the Southwest seasoning. So that is all the lovely spices that are in that spice blend. And it gives the chicken like a rub. When you turn it over, it's got the grill marks from the grill. And it is, I can tell right now, it is cooked to perfection. It's, look at, it's so moist. Look at, it's like splitting apart. That's how moist it is. I am so excited to dive into this. And now, a word from our sponsor. In the Double Burner Grill Pan, not only is it gorgeous, but guess what? It comes with a lifetime guarantee. That's right, the last Double Burner Grill Pan you will ever have to purchase. There's more, it's dishwasher safe. That's right, easy cleanup. Don't like the dishwasher? No big deal. It will just wipe up with one easy swipe. And guess what? There's more. You can use metal utensils on it. That's right, metal utensils, and it'll be scratch free. Back to the programming. <laughs> the veggies here have been higher. So on this side of the grill, I've had it at a medium high because I had so many veggies in it, and it has just done an incredible job cooking these up, and they look phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that burner off. I'm gonna put my veggies back in my classic glass bowl okay these bowls come with a set of three by the way this is the medium size there's one smaller and one bigger so they all three nest and in, fit inside of each other so therefore it makes for easy storage they're tempered glass so you can go ahead and put hot items like this right off the stove right into the bowl i mean look at do you see how caramelized that is can you does that camera pick it up that onion is that's mine. I'm getting that onion right there. That looks superb. My chicken is hanging out in the back. I'm about to cut it up and I'm gonna put it right on my wood cutting board. It is acacia wood, but I'm gonna show you what else I love to use this board for. It's multi-purpose here in my kitchen. So this is the side with the wells and this is where I'm gonna put the chicken. So if there was a really juicy piece of meat or something, rest assured that the juice will run right into the well and the well can capture that juice. These handy dandy handles so can you imagine how gorgeous a cheese tray like a charcuterie platter right with your different salamis and cheeses and crackers and sometimes i'll do like candied pecans and little um, bowls of our raspberry habanero sauce which is amazing by the way raspberry habanero sauce i'll have in like little um like our one cup prep bowls or glass prep bowls here and then you've got like some like a brie cheese on here and some white cheddar and that sauce is amazing that is the sauce i'm referring to as you can see we already have some gone because it doesn't last that long in our house it makes for an easy entertaining because if someone's coming over i can take a block of cream cheese and i've even served it on here like that i've taken a block of cream cheese and then just put a little bit of this you could probably get about three servings of this cream cheese recipe just this you pour some of it over the cream cheese have some crackers it's amazing okay do you see that it is perfect it's absolutely perfect so i'm just going to go ahead and do thin slices using my chef's knife it is cutting like butter look at that so if you see the way the knife is it's got a circle here and a circle here and it reminds us of where to put your thumb and your finger so you properly hold the knife and grip it around the bolster. Some of you may be holding your knife like this. You're not gonna have much control. It's not as safe, and it's gonna be hard on your wrist. Simply gorgeous. I'm gonna show you how to get rice done perfectly every time in like 70% less time than you typically would over the stove top. And I promise you, it actually turns out way better. So what I'm using for that is the quick cooker. The quick cooker is Pampered Chef's state-of-the-art pressure cooker. Let me show you how it works. So you lift the top up and it has this stainless steel bowl inside. So what I'm doing is I'm taking one cup of jasmine rice, about a tablespoon of oil. Let me show you how I'm gonna close this up because these things never work for me correctly half the time. So I you take, 
our Twixit clips. They come in a pack of all different sizes and they will get the job done. So I open it up. I'm gonna put the Twixit clip around here and it gets a nice tight seal on it so I don't have to worry about it spilling. Of water. You can also use a veggie broth or a chicken broth to really add some extra flavor to it. I'm gonna put the top on. The settings here, there are 16 settings. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on white rice. So I'm gonna put this, move this knob and put it on white rice and press start. What I really also appreciate with this quick cooker is the support that comes along with it. Each quick cooker is shipped out with this cooking guide that is chock full of amazing recipes to get you going. Some of my favorites, is a pot roast with mashed potatoes. So yummy and so easy. I've even done this when the chuck roast is completely frozen solid. Yes, right in there. Frozen salad, delicious and tender. Okay, our rice is done. I knew that because it beeped. And then I hit cancel here and I'm gonna let the steam up. But before I do, let me show you what is unique to this quick cooker is the fact that there are handles down here and this is staying nice and cool so I can maneuver it even when it is pressurizing and even when it's just done pressurizing so if I wanted to pick it up so I don't so if I had it like this on my countertop for instance the steam would go right into my cabinets I like to move it take the handles below that are so conveniently placed and turn it around and I can do that. That is unique to this pressure cooker. It's not scary. You don't have to run for cover. You just press the button and once you press it, it'll click and it will release the steam without you having to hold the button. And this rice is going to be cooked to perfection. So another handy little guy to have here are these microwave grip sets. Okay, my rice is looking gorgeous. It looks like it is just perfect, just as I suspected. By the way, this is the teak wood spatula. There's also a corner spoon. These are my favorite spoons, by the way, you guys, these teak spoons, the corner spoon, and there's also just a regular spoon, all part of the teak wood collection. My fave. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna just throw this all together. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna store it in my refrigerator too to make it super eye appealing and easy to just grab it on the go or as you're getting ready for work in the morning or for a quick dinner. So I'm gonna take my um, glazed stone bowl. So this is a Pampered Chef bowl. The reason why I like using this bowl, especially if I'm grabbing something from the refrigerator, this is oven and microwave safe. So let's say I wanted to forego the microwave. I can put my meal in here and put it in my toaster oven even and warm it up in this bowl in the toaster oven or simply throw it right in the microwave and it will heat it up and you know, you don't waste a dish then in between do you? I'm gonna take a little bit of lime and my paring knife. This is a nice little sharp guy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wedge my lime. I'm gonna wedge all of it right now because I'm gonna show you how I store my limes to make it super easy on the go. And what I do is I take my one cup prep bowl and I put my leftover limes right in this prep bowl. I'm gonna leave one out because I'm gonna use that right now. Okay, so now we're gonna add our, we're gonna, we're gonna build this burrito bowl. Here we go, our rice bowl. What's a burrito bowl? I'm gonna call it a rice bowl. It's a rice bowl. Okay, so we're gonna take some of that delicious rice and put it right in here. Keep in mind, you guys can use a brown rice if you prefer, or if you prefer a quinoa, you can do quinoa. This is sitting in our um, five cup, five cup leak proof glass container. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but I like them because they come with the lids and it is just really easy to store, especially if you wanna bring like something to work, it, to eat in here, you know that you can heat it up in the microwave and it's like, you know, it's not full of plastic, so I like that part. Okay, so I've got my rice in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my pinto beans that are fresh and homemade. I made them right in that quick cooker, and they're sitting in the three cup um, leak-proof container. So there's my beans. There we go. These look amazing. They look so good. I'm gonna add those in the plate, in the bowl. To store these, I'm gonna keep them in the glass bowl just like this, and I'm gonna put the silicone lid right over the bowl. These silicone lids do come with three sizes, all three sizes, so conveniently fit all of 
our three glass bowls, which is great. Take my tongs, throw in some of this delicious chicken. It just looks so gorgeous. So, so, so good. And I'm gonna clip a little bit. I have, so here is, oh, this is my tip. Here is cilantro right in here. Fresh cilantro that I've had in here probably for about four days now. Do you see how nice and delicious it still is? This is the large silicone prep bowl. These prep bowls come with three, three different sizes. They come with a set and they come with these lids. And for whatever reason, it holds like my cilantro or parsley so well in the refrigerator. And of course I use it for so many other things because it's dishwasher safe, um, microwave safe, freezer safe, refrigerator safe. So you can have so much fun with these bowls. Okay, so I'm gonna take my professional shears. They have a nice spring to them. These are great for like clipping bones, you know, if you gotta clip chicken bones or things like that. But I'm just gonna use it to clip off some of my cilantro right onto my bowl. I'm gonna give it a little squirt of my fresh lime. Ooh, amazing. And I'm gonna use a little bit of Greek yogurt. I like Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. It, first of all, keeps you full longer. It has more whole ingredients, less sugars. Stop the presses. That bowl. Now, if you wanted to recreate this bowl for the next two or three days, let me show you how easy it's gonna be. You've got your chicken in your leak-proof container. Gorgeous, right? You can see it right in your refrigerator. You've got your rice in your leak-proof container. You've got your fresh made pinto beans. You've got your fresh limes and you've got your beautiful bowl of veggies. And then of course don't forget about that fresh beautiful cilantro that you can put right alongside all of this on one of your shelves and then of course put this in your cheese drawer in your refrigerator you guys. You could grab for it any time to make a quick lunch, snack, dinner you're going to be so happy you did this. But for real, enough of the nonsense. <laughs> Let's dig in. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of the rice, a little bit of the Greek yogurt, a little bit of that chicken. You guys, the chicken turned out so tender. I'm not even joking, it's so tender and delicious. Here we go. Mmm. I could eat chicken and rice every day, all day. And the caramelization, like from those onions on that grill pan are superb. So <laughs> After my, bag, my, bag, my bag popped a little bit. I got a little crazy. 